Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to share with you my plan for the 2023 growing season. My name is Mari and I'm gardening in Queens, New York City. This is considered zone 7B. I have a small backyard garden at a rental apartment and also a little space just around the block from me. And we had a lot of success with the garden last year. Last season was definitely our best season yet. It was my first year with this backyard here in this apartment. The year before it was the same location but in a different unit on the same building with a much smaller space in the front yard. Last year was an experiment year. I grew a lot of things for the first time and I wanted to kind of see how things would do. This year will be more tried and true varieties, things that worked well for me and a little bit less experimentation. My partner and I are getting married in the summer and then after the wedding we're gonna spend some time away in the summer too to visit my family in my home country in Brazil and I won't be able to attend to the garden as much as I did last year. I'm also taking into consideration the time that takes me to not only take care of the garden but also to process all the harvest that we get through the growing season too. For us last year harvesting did not only mean making dinners with fresh food or prepping some lunches, it also meant that we have to preserve a lot of the stuff because we had so many things at once that we're not able to eat everything. I did a lot of canning projects, a lot of pickling, fermenting, dehydrating and I still at this time in February have food from the garden that we preserved from the last growing season. Everything on the shelf up here has been dehydrated from the garden. I have different things such as dried herbs that I use for tea. This is lemon verbena. I have lots of it. I have some dried peppers that I didn't have a chance to make hot sauce or can it. And then there's some dried cherry tomatoes. We loved eating these through the season. There's some dried flowers, more peppers, some herbs here. I use the herbs a lot for cooking so I don't have as much as I had when I started. During the season this whole thing here was filled with dried things from the garden we kind of got through at least half of it which is good and there's some extra things in here and down here i keep my canned stuff it's covered so it protects from the sun but i still have lots of things that i canned from the garden in here on both of these sides this one is fermented i still have to finish processing that this is what i mean by processing the harvest Lots of those processes are actually very time consuming and you have to be very careful with sanitation and all of that to make sure nothing spoils or go bad. We are extremely grateful for having it, but this year we want to focus more on things that we could just eat as soon as we harvest. So we're downsizing quite a bit, but because we are downsizing in the garden veggies with this space, that means that I'm gonna have a lot more space to plant flowers because I still wanna use this space that we have. And because I am getting married this year, I'm going to be using some of these flowers to decorate our own wedding. But more about that later. On this video, I want to focus on the vegetable varieties that I'm growing. I was able to actually select everything in this little tiny box for my seeds for this year. Last year, I planted almost everything in this box. This is my whole seed collection. It was very hard for me to come here and select that. It took me a lot longer than I thought, but now we have this box. It's still full. We still have lots of stuff. I like to grow things for the cool season too, for the spring season. The things I did the best in our garden last year were different kinds of greens and peas. So for the peas, I selected two varieties of the sugar, snap, peas. They're my favorite garden snack. I prefer to snack on peas than on cherry tomatoes. Don't judge me, but that's true. And this one, this is a golden sweet peas. These were so good. They were snow peas. They're not snap peas. They don't get swollen and crunchy. They're more the long slender variety and they're very good cooked. And then for greens, I am doing a variety of lettuce. I'm not being super picky about the lettuce that I'm growing. I didn't order any new seeds. What I'm going to do is just get a bunch of the seeds they already have mix them up and make a salad green mix or something like this. Nothing very fancy. I already have a lot. I don't need to buy any more. So this is what I'm doing for this year. I also have a couple things like this one. It's already a kale mix. So I already have different seeds of kale in here and I wanted to use up my other seeds. So that's the plan for the lettuce. So very simple. For Asian greens, I'm doing bok choy, tatsoi, and my favorite, choy sum. This one I'm not going to mix with the lettuce. The other ones I'm going to mix with the lettuce and keep cutting as tender leaves. This I'm going to let go to maturity. I love the flavor of this and I love how tender this stem is. And I'm going to grow one variety of broccoli only. I was not going to, but when I was looking through my seeds, I found that I bought this variety last year that is a 30 day variety. So it's supposed to mature from seed to harvest in 30 days, one month. And it's a 99% germination rate. It's called Sweet Stem, it's an F1 hybrid. I don't remember buying this, but 
is here and I'm gonna use it since I have the seeds and it is so short in time I'm very curious to see how this will perform I'm only growing one more spring crop with that with our radishes also a really easy very fast crop this one specifically matures in 21 to 28 days so I'm just doing a few radishes just so we have a few other fresh things to eat with the salad that would be all for the spring very little compared to last year but this spring I'm also growing lots of flowers I have already started my flower seeds if you want to check what I'm growing I can link the video up I wanted to start attracting pollinators sooner to my garden that's why I want to give a lot of space to flowers in the spring this year there will be quick turned over flowers so last year I did not have anything growing at the plot for instance until the end of April like the mid-May which is when usually people plant things in here but if you do cool season flowers which I'm trying for the first time this year maybe I could have a crop before that before I can plant my warm season just so the pollinators start coming to here early and I can provide food for them a little bit early in the season but that's a test I'm still learning about those cool season flowers too moving on to summer a little wedding ceremony is scheduled for mid july and we're going to brazil after we will spend three to four weeks there so i'm going to be adjusting the planting dates of my veggies this year but we are still growing tomatoes of course i'm going to start with them this time i usually leave them for less but i'll start with them i picked varieties that perform the best and the taste of the best for us so I looked for productivity and obviously flavor because that's the reason why I'm growing them at home. I also picked one of each color and I gave myself some space to experimentation. So I'm dividing my tomatoes in two categories. The big and the terminal tomato, big slicer tomatoes, heirlooms, beautiful, colorful ones. And then the sherry tomatoes, which are going to be in a different category. So first let's talk about big heirloom tomatoes. I picked the top five, the top first five are the ones that produced the best in my garden and did very well with our weather and also tasted really good. Then the other ones are just some things that I want to try again and see if they do better in the garden. I'm trying only one new variety this year for my big slicer tomatoes. For the sherry tomatoes, I'm also growing the ones that produce the best. They're very prolific and tasted really good to me. In that category, I'm experimenting with two new ones because I had already grown these other varieties a few years before. So I wanted to do something different. I also picked a couple for the green stock. They're a dwarf for determinate varieties that might do well on the green stock. So altogether, I have 16 varieties of tomatoes. I'm probably going to have only one to two plants of each. I'm not sure yet, maybe only one. The top five, top first five, the big ones are going to be Black Beauty. Black Beauty was the tomato I liked the best in my garden last year. It produced a lot, was very resilient, and also tasted amazing. Had only one problem with that, they do split easily. They have very thin skin and they are prone to splitting, which I don't care. That's more like aesthetic thing, especially if I'm not using for candy. I'll try to catch them before I rain or before I water, but if they have a little splitting and I put them inside in this car, it's totally fine. It was still easy to enjoy it. So not a big problem for me, but just want to let you know they are prone to splitting, at least they were in my garden. Second one is the Ananas Noir. Actually, let me show you guys. Some of them I have the packs in here that have pictures in it. So let's start with the Black Beauty. This is how the Black Beauty looks like. And then the Ananas Noir, which is the black pineapple tomato. This was recommended to me last year. It was so good. Those two are early producers. They produced about the same time. And this one, it was just so tasty. I never expected a tomato, like a greenish tomato, to taste that good. But if you let these actually ripen in the vine and grab them when they're nice and juicy, it's so thick. My mouth's watering right now just thinking about it. It's so, so tasty. I really enjoyed eating this in salads and sandwiches. It was so good. Not only delicious, very good performer, did well in our climate here. So those are the first two. The third one that I picked, a little bit unusual because I did not pick this variety actually. I got this as a free seed so this is a torrent burn terracotta and i really enjoyed it i mostly didn't plant this last year i was like i don't know i got this free seed let's see and it was amazing the color is actually a bit darker than this it's almost like a brownish terracotta color not as bright orange but it's tasty 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 tomato i was impressed by it it is prolific not as prolific as the black beauty the ananas noir but very tasty. This is the orange variety that I'm choosing this year. And then another one, number four, also for taste. This, I think the first four ones are for taste. Is this Berkeley tie-dye green tomato. Very tasty too, very pretty. So pretty inside. I don't know if you can really see in here. They have a very nice color variation too. Some of them get super nice and orange like that. Some of them stay more into the green side, but they all tasted really good. They're firm, they're nice, they're juicy. I love it. Also produced well, not as much as the Black Beauty and the Ananas Noir, but still enough. I harvested a lot of this 
last year too. Those are my heavy hitters, okay? Together with the best producing of all, the most prolific of all that we had, it was a red tomato called Costoluto Genovese. Now let me actually get a picture of it. I have this from the seed pack here, it's a lobe tomato, but I am not growing them from this pack this year. I saved my own seeds from my best performing plant that stayed alive longer than any other plants. That was the last one that I harvested green tomatoes from one plant. I harvested like two full baskets of green tomatoes. I can put a picture here if you're curious to see. I took the chance to still harvest seeds from it, even if it had mixed with one of the ones that were there, but did so, so good that I, I wanted to try to grow it again. It might not be true to the plant, but it performed so well to the garden that I have to see. And then the other five that I'm trying are this yellow brandywine. I wanted to have a yellow tomato and I'll see how this one does. Same thing with a dark tomato. The year before, in 2021, I loved growing a Cherokee purple tomato. It was my favorite tomato by flavor. And last year I tried to do the Paul Robinson, but the Paul Robinson, at least the seeds that I had, they didn't do very good. They produced very few tomatoes. And I was very disappointed because I really missed eating that nice, dark, smoky tomato from the garden. So I'm going back to the Cherokee purple. I will give a chance to the Paul Robinson again in years to come, but this time I'm doing the Shiroki purple to complete my rainbow, the color of the tomato. So I have yellow, orange, red, purple, and black, dark. So the next ones are going to be red tomatoes. And the new one that I'm trying is called Sergeant Pepper. I've seen many, many good reviews about it last year, and it comes from Camel Bella Farms. I'm going to do the Amish paste tomato again. This is from Hudson Valley Seed Company. Same with this New Yorker tomato. It's, this is a red, determinate variety. This one here says to start early. I'm probably gonna be the first tomato that I'm going to start and supposed to be cold tolerant and produce super fast. And I think that's all for our big tomatoes. Next week can go to cherry tomatoes and for cherry tomatoes this year, I'm gonna start with a very controversial variety. This variety here got a lot of bad rap, I guess last year among gardeners but it performed very good for me and I loved it. So that is the black strawberry tomatoes. I love the way they looked on the vine. Those tomatoes are so pretty. I was just, I couldn't even believe it. it they give me so much joy to have them producing the season. They produced very early and they did taste good for me. But now here's a trick. The first harvest that I had, they're a little bit sour, not very tasty because I harvested them too early. With these guys here, if you want good flavor, you have to let them ripen a lot more on the vine. And they take a while. So they won't just turn red and that's it. They will start turning, you see it blushing, and then you let it go. Probably a week, sometimes two. And then when they're turning almost all purple, that's when I was harvesting. If they're light pink, they're still not gonna taste that great. But if you let it stay longer, at least my experience, they taste really good and sweet. Okay, second one is sun gold tomatoes. I'm growing them because they're prolific. I like the color. I'm also going to try this for the first time. This is Rosella tomato. This is a purple cherry tomato. As I mentioned, I really like the taste of smoky, dark tomatoes. And there's one more that I don't think is a cherry. It's more like, a, it's a bit bigger. It looks a bit like the strawberry tomato, but it's called the persuasion tomato. So I'll see this is one new to experiment as well. And for the green stock, I've chosen two varieties, which are smaller varieties, and I picked a cherry and a bigger tomato. So this is a purple heart tomato, which I grew last year. I didn't know it was a miniature dwarf variety. So I planted them with the big tomatoes and got completely shaded by the indeterminate tomatoes. It didn't do very well, but the fruit tasted great. And it's a short plant, so I'm gonna put this in the green stock, probably my bottom tiers, because it's still gonna get a little bit big for tomatoes. For the cherries, I have this one here. Cherry Falls. I think I bought this in my first year of gardening and I tried to put them in a hanging basket but I can't remember how it performed. But I still have the seeds and I want to use it up because these were packed for 2020 I think and I want to make sure I use them because they're already 2023 and I'm going to put them in the green stock. So this is for baskets but I felt that it falls from the pocket will have a very nice look and those are determinate so they will produce everything at once. I'm going to harvest everything and they're going to be done. So by that time I'm going to take it out and plant something else in the green stock. I'm going to make a separate video about everything that I'm planting in the green stock too because I know lots of you came here to my channel because of my green stock review video but just wanted to share these varieties here real quick. All right those are all the tomatoes that I picked. Very hard job. I ended up getting more seeds last year too but I'm trying not to even to look at them only for those specialty seeds that I got for these ones that I'm trying now. And uh, I'm gonna probably plant just one to two plants of each. That's all, not as much. I might do a seedling sale because lots of you asked me for it last year. My seedlings did so well, they're so pretty, they performed so good. 
So I'm thinking that if I do a seedling sale, I will grow more of the other varieties. So please, if you are local and you're thinking to buy some stuff, please comment what would you like to buy. I can try to grow this for you and start at the same time that I did last year. So you can have a successful growing season this year too, hopefully. Now we're going to move on to peppers next. I am not growing lots of peppers this year. I have lots of pickled peppers in my fridge still. And I have a lot of hot sauce in my fridge still from the home cooked peppers. I have frozen peppers in my freezer. I have fermented peppers here in, my, in the back. I have some pickled peppers. So I have lots of peppers that I can probably eat through this whole year. And I'm not growing lots of peppers this year. It is hard, I love growing peppers, but I just thought that if I wanted to use it up, the stuff that I can, that I preserved, I don't need to get a lot more fresh. I'm only gonna do two varieties. I'm going to do jalapenos, because jalapenos are something that I do eat fresh. Put that in a lot of stuff that we cook. Even though, let me show you guys, I still have six shards of this maple pickled jalapenos. I didn't, I filmed a video about me making this, I just never got a chance to edit. Those are so good. They're like, I don't know if you heard about cowboy candy, which is a very sweet, Pickled jalapeno, this one has a lot less sugar and has some maple syrup, so adds a little bit more depth of flavor and some onions. And this is really good. Jalapenos are something that I'm okay with maybe doing a canning project. This is a much easier canning project because they process for a lot less time and I think pickled is easier. I don't have any seeds for it. I used all my seeds last year, so I'm thinking that I'm going just to buy a start from a, at a farmer's market, from a local farm. They do sell seedlings at the Union Square Market, where I shop a lot for me and my private chef clients. So. I'll do that. Also, I want to grow the seed that Greenstock sent me, the California Wonder Pepper on the Greenstock, just to test it out. That's a big sweet bell pepper. Again, seedling sale, if you're interested. I can grow some more peppers. I have lots of varieties in here. Go ahead and watch my 2022 grow list video. I'll go through a lot of them. If you're interested in anything, I'll grow them for you if you want to pick them up in May when it's time to put them out. So please let me know in the comment section down below. Next after peppers, I am moving on to cucumbers. Cucumbers did not do well in my garden last year. We had lots of cucumber beetles. They did a lot of damage. We didn't harvest them. We didn't have enough to pickle, you know, preserve a lot. We ate almost all of them fresh. I made a couple pickles, quick refrigerator pickles, and we just ate them right away. Didn't have enough to can and preserve, but it's, got, it's nice to have some fresh cucumbers, especially I really like the silver slicer variety this one over here i think it's really really tasty because the skin is white there's no bitterness at all it's and it's very crunchy it's a slice of cucumber but it's also good for pickling so this is the one that i'm trying to grow again this year knowing that i might not get a lot i might not get any the cucumbers beat them i'll attack them but i'm gonna try anyway now let's move to beans i'm only growing three varieties of beans this year one of them in the green stock i'm gonna grow bush beans in the green stock again I grew smaller bush beans last year and they did good, but this year I want to try these dragon tongue beans in the green stock. These will get really big, this plant gets tall. I want to try to grow them in the bottom pockets and see how it does. I'm also planting these scarlet runner beans. They have beautiful seeds, I'm going to show you this. And beautiful flowers that attack hummingbirds and different pollinators. So there's huge seeds in here. I've never grown this, but I've heard that if you harvest them still young, when the pods are not too big, they can still eat them as green beans. They're nice and tender. I don't know, I'm gonna see. And the third one is my favorite, my long beans. I don't have as many seeds left in here. I'm going to plant the pack. I do have another long bean variety. This is a green one. I'm gonna mix them up and grow that in my trailers and the plot. Then the other thing that is making to my garden this year is okra. I'm gonna try this heavy heater okra, which I also tried last year, didn't do well, but I will give it more space and more sun and etc. this time and hopefully it does better. And we have a red variety too. But this is everything that I'm growing for vegetables. You know, those are the things that I would like to eat the most. They're the things that performed well in the garden, a lot less than last year. So the things that I'm not, they're not making the list this year are squash. I tried to grow a lot of squash last year. Some of them produced, but most of them did not perform very well. We had lots of fine borers and they just weakened the plants and damaged the stems. And I lost a bunch of plants and garden space to it. They also are prone to powdery mildew. We have tons of powdery mildew here. Unfortunately, I don't have control of it. All the neighbors have it. I can see them walking in the garden. So that's something that, you know, can be bought by the wind. So that's why I'm not growing squash this year. And I'm also not growing any potatoes. I grew a lot of potatoes in buckets last year. They did great. But we just 
Don't eat them fast enough. I mean, I like eating potatoes, of course, and they're pretty low maintenance crop, but they take space and storage, not for any pests or anything, just because we don't want to give the space to it. But also not planting eggplant. That was a hard decision for me because I really like eating eggplant and the fairy tale eggplant did good last year and we harvested a lot and I loved it. Maybe I'll change my mind. If something doesn't go well, if something dies, I don't know, we have a little space in the garden, I might buy a starter from the farmer's market and plant too, but I'm not starting any from seed. And then, I'm also not planting any beets or carrots this year. Beets were good last year, but we just don't eat tons of beets. I really prefer to eat beets in the winter, and I had a bunch of harvest them in the summer. They grow great in the green stock. I grew most of them in my green stock. I harvested lots of colorful ones, but we're just not doing this year. I decided to try to grow the bush beans and the dwarf tomatoes in the green stock instead. So, no beets for us, no carrots. Carrots didn't do very well. I've been having a hard time germinating carrots. Last year was a hard year for me. 2021, we didn't have some good harvest, but we just decided not to do any root crops this year. Other than radishes, which I'm gonna grow in the spring only. So that's it, those things did not make to the garden plan. I might change my mind, of course. The garden, as always, is good to have a plan, but it's also very good to observe and to adapt. So I always have a start for me in the growing seasons. I will try to plan everything out. I have to start my seeds, that's why I need a plant. Plan. And then once things go, if some of them don't make, you know, I always am open to go support some nurseries and go to the farmer's market too and buy some starts for them to fill up the gaps and keep adapting and changing as we go. But at this moment, that's what I'm growing for vegetables. I have a very long flower list because I wanted to grow different flowers for the wedding. We have some space in the house that we have in the wedding and it's just going to be a backyard wedding but it's a beautiful lake house it has a gorgeous lake view so we're having the wedding there it is also what i had my first garden so it's very special to me and i'd like to try to grow some stuff in there and we also have a backup plan with contacting some local farms that we might go buy flowers by the stem anyway i am still gonna make all the arrangements i'm still gonna try to make the decor to offset the cost too of course I'll make a separate video with the wedding plants because i figured that most of you guys are here for the veggies anyway, right? So I will record a video with the plans of what I'm growing for the wedding. I'm a little nervous about it also because of timing. I have to have things blooming a week before the wedding. We depend on the nature for that, but I do have backup plans. I hope it's gonna be okay. We are gonna make it work regardless, but I'm very excited and I'd love to take you guys along in that journey with me too if you're interested. But that's why I'm making it a separate video. And I'm gonna make a little short video for the green stock too, just in case you don't have this much space, you're still gardening in an urban area with a small space or patio and you're gardening mostly in pots. I'll go over the things that I'm going in the green stock and maybe in pots too, so it can be helpful to you as well. So thank you, thank you so much for watching today. I know it's a long video, but I love making these videos because it's always fun to look at back through the growing season, to see what the original plan was and how things actually worked. I really wanted to come here and share with you guys what I'm planning to grow, the varieties and everything, and then we can watch in real time how the garden's gonna do. If you have any questions about anything, you can put them in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, fun and helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help with YouTube. And also subscribe to the channel if you knew and you wanted to see how the garden is gonna do from now, this planting stage and seed stage, all the way into fruition in the summer. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. I probably forgot some stuff about it too. I try to be organized and put everything in my computer. I'm gonna show you guys the real deal of planting a garden, how messy this looks, but that's all the notes, took a bunch of notes, drew some schematics, have all my seeds in there. I, they were organized before, I them all in there, but now I'm gonna have to go organize everything again. But it's a lot of fun. I love trying to plant the garden and see how it's gonna go. I have a list in here that I'm gonna share in the description below too, so you can see the varieties and everything. Hopefully I can put links in there too, so you can click and go get them. But that's it, so exciting. Hopefully things work out well for us this year.